Hello everyone, welcome back to the second episode of The Gilly Show. We're going to go over some care and maintenance of an IFLA and how you need to treat them to get the longest life you can out of them. And uh, on that note, a new member at our board, uh, Philip Stoner, has had a rack of IFLAs running for 45 years now. That's pretty impressive if you ask me. But uh, you should go on the board, uh, find him. He's in one of the posts, and I'd congratulate him. That that's a that's a remarkable feat, and it is proof these batteries, these batteries, pretty badass. Let me tell you. So, as of yesterday, let's say you found your IFLA pack. You've managed to load it up. You've got it home. You've got it tore apart, and you got that bad boy assembled. Okay, and make sure you don't put it inside your house. And look, guys, if you've made it to my board, it is a DIY board, okay? I have to go by the presumption you guys have some basic knowledge of what's going on out here. In other words, you would not put a, a flooded lead-acid battery inside your home. That should be very common knowledge. If we really need to go over the safety aspects of what we're doing here, leave some comments, and I will cover those. I, I just... I assume everybody knows those, and maybe I shouldn't. So if we want something covering the safety aspect of this, let me know. We will do a video on it, okay? I just I want to touch base on that. Got your forklift battery, traction battery, IFLA, whatever you want to call it. You got it home, you got it in your system, okay? Now, how do we go about getting this thing to live a long life? Well, what they're designed for is brutal conditions. They sit in this, this big machine that has no suspension and hard rubber tires. So they're getting bounced around, jostled around, slammed around, forward, backwards. They actually have a pretty brutal life. And that's why they are built so incredibly tough. But they happen to like that beating around. <laughs> what happens is all that beating around and getting sloshed around knocks stuff off the plates, okay? You got plates in here and they'll sulfate, get, just get general stuff on them, okay? And getting beat around and bounced around knocks all that stuff off the plates and keep these in really healthy condition. We can't do that at home, okay? I am looking at building a shaker system for this, but I can't imagine most people are going to go through that. So. You got it home, you got it hooked up. How do you keep it healthy? We have two ways to help us do what happens to them in, in a forklift, okay? And we do that with a controlled overcharge, which is basically an equalization charge, or our charging amps. I know there's a lot of information out there about maximum charging amps. I do not get into these these little golf cart batteries, sealed lead acid. I, I don't know anything about that stuff. I don't care to know about that. All I all I focus on are these bad boys. Okay. Now to keep these healthy, if you have a one thousand hour amp hour pack, okay. This one happens to be 2,400. Our pack is 2,400 amp hours, okay? Uh, you guys are going to love my writing. I've never been much of a writer, so. Now, what do you need? How does this need to be treated every single day so you can go 45 years with your IFLA, just like Philip Stoner? And Philip, if you're watching this, leave me a comment. I want to know how you charge your, your bank daily, what your amp rate is, versus your amp hour. You need to charge this consistently, okay, at a bare minimum of 10% of this number, okay, which gives us 100 amps. A 1,000 amp hour IFLA to remain healthy needs a bare minimum of 10% of its rated amp hours, okay? 
Why do we need that? Well, because we're not in a forklift getting bounced around a factory all day long. So we need to do that to keep the, the plates clean inside the cells. Okay? Now, you want to be higher than that. You really do. For a thousand amp hour, you know, look, you know your needs better than I know your needs. Okay? I don't want to tell you how fast the charge is. You can put a lot of amps in these and charge these buggers fast. Okay? We, we have dumped close to 400 amps in this pack. When I, when I look at uh, equalizing these, okay, it takes a lot of amperage. But that amperage drops off as they charge. And this entire 2400 amp hour pack, when I do an equalization, I drive them up to 30.5 volts to 31 volts for about four hours. And when it starts, your amperage is really up there. But as it goes, it drops down. And that is actually how you tell when your bulk charging, okay, is there and complete. Because there's a world of difference at 29.7 volts and 200 amps and 29.7 volts and 20 amps. At 20 amps, you've done your bulk charging on your IFLA or your forklift battery, okay? And just a rough number for that is, is around, for every 800 amp hours, the finishing rate's going to be about 30 amps when they, when they, when they finish out. That is, that is for bulk charging. That is not for equalization. That's, that's the whole different thing, but we'll get there. We're going to go over the bulk charging. Okay, so you need a bare minimum of 10%, which is going to be 100 amps. Where do you want to drive this voltage up to? For everyday normal use, and I'm going to talk a 24 volt number, okay? If you're running 12, divide it by 2. If you're running 48, multiply it by 2. It's that easy, promise you. Numbers work out. <laughs> okay, everyday charging, we got 100 amps on here. Equalizing, it gets into personal preference. Some people say once a week, some people say once a month. Uh, look, when people ask me directly, I say once a month. That, that, it's really not true. I, I just do it when, when I feel like doing it, okay? Uh, I run them up, and I will leave them there for about four hours bubbling, okay? That is the other way we keep these plates clean on here. And you've got to make sure you have a system to be able to do that. It, it's, and, and it's okay if you get, you know, you get this big rack and you have to build to it. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? Just remember, your finishing goal needs to be above that 10% for daily charging, okay? Or over time, these batteries will sulfate. And you're going to be one of those people that only get a decade out of your IFLA, okay? And we're all here trying to maximize our return for our investment and whether that investment is money outlay or elbow grease okay we all want the most we can get and this is how you do it this 10 percent figure it's it's critically important guys make sure you build your system to hit those numbers as a bare minimum and you do want more okay i i don't have enough panels we are actually expanding quite a bit around here on our system as most of you know I, I want to be able to charge my rack in four hours in the middle of winter on a cloudy day, okay? That's going to take some panels. Thankfully, we have a rather large home with a rather large roof. And the problem for us is harder because our panels directly east and directly west, nothing south facing. So, I have to set up and build to catch the morning sun on, on, on our row of controllers and then the afternoon sun on a row of controllers, okay? If you guys haven't figured out yet, just because all these places give you math on something, that doesn't, I'm telling you, it doesn't work out the real life, okay? It takes more panels than what you realize if you plan on running your home off of solar, okay? It takes panels to be able to charge these up, okay? Like I said, you need to be at 10%. Uh, that's going to get your longest life out of the batteries. Okay, now we have our minimum charge rate established for our pack. What should we charge it to? And you've heard me mention a few times what we should go to. An IFLA forklift battery 
whatever we want to call it. Okay? And just so you know, I call these an IFLA because when I got in this adventure, I went to all these other solar boards, okay? And I was laughed out of there because I had a forklift back. So, what do you want to take these things to? Okay. You want to charge them up to 29.7 volts. Okay, that is your bulk charge number. Okay, now you will have to learn your pack because it's going to be very individualistic. Okay, how many amps you end up with when the bulk charging stage is over? I have 800 amp hour racks, I have three of them. I'm looking for a 30 amp finishing rate, so 30 times 3 is 90 amps. When my stuff comes down to around 90 amps, I know my bulk charge has, is finishing up on my, on my rack of batteries, okay? Now, we should then go to what's called a float charge state, okay? A float charge, and look, you can go to eight different places and get eight different slightly numbers, you know, slightly different numbers on all of these. The good news is IFLAs are pretty forgiving, so they really don't care. Just, just get a number around these ranges and stick to it. Okay? Now, this is bulk. This is the bulk charge. Now, when we go to uh, the float charge, We want 27.7 volts, okay? You want enough solar that not only can you take this up to the 29.7 volts while powering your house, mind you. You have to remember that. You need this charge rate on top of what it takes to power your home, okay? That's very, very, very important. Remember that. Now, once your controller hits this, and hopefully you got a programmable controller, I use all cheap Chinese stuff and I have really good luck with it. And all that stuff is like really programmable. And I know a lot of people buy this expensive stuff and can't program it. So I look, use what you are comfortable with. I am comfortable getting cheap Chinese stuff. I have to modify it, fix it up a little bit. I got no problem with that. And, Send it, okay? Been very good to us. There we go, Smokey again. So we have a you want to be able to program it to a float of 27.7 volts while powering your house through the day. Okay, that is that's the key to all of this. You have to have enough panels not only to charge your battery, but to run your house while you're charging your battery. And that, and that take it takes more than anybody really wants to tell you it takes. And that's another problem you see everywhere. They use this simple mathematical equation. You need 20 panels, 20 250 watt panels. Well, what the hell good's that gonna do you? Okay, you need more than that if, if you're truly gonna go off grid and run your home and, and live well. Not some scaled back lifestyle that you got propane stoves and uh, whatever, the, the gas route. That was never even, that was not even an option for us. If I was going solar, this electric home had better run on solar, plain and simple. No. But it brings it down to 27.7 volts. You need to be able to maintain that until the sun goes down, okay? You're, you know what I mean? You, you get here, you get charged. Here's your float. You should be able to run your home. Once your sun starts going down, this is going to drop to uh, 25.3. What? Let me take that back. If you take all the load off of your battery and let it sit for several hours, I keep forgetting I'm going over a voltage, just so I apologize. 25.3. Is fully charged. It's fully charged if it's been resting. Look, some people say an hour, some people say 10 hours. Here's the deal let it rest a little bit, check your voltages. Okay? If you're at 25.29 on a 24 volt IFLA, 
you are at a full charge. Do not go by... What are they? One of them's 2589 for full charge. There's some other numbers out there, okay? Those are for different style of lead acid batteries. AGM, SEAL, the small flooded stuff, okay? These run a lower voltage than what most people are used to, but you are fully charged right there. Now, what can you run? The, how, what would that be? Let me do some quick math on that. Hi, Neil. <laughs> I'll send you pictures of that wing, I promise. Okay, uh, let's see here. On this fully charged battery, we have 2.10 volts at rest. This is at rest, okay? It would be, would signify fully charged. Now, you have a 1,000 amp hour pack. You get to use 1,000 amp hours out of that, not 50%, not 80%, okay? Remember that, 100% depth of discharge rated for capacity, okay? Now, if you were to do that, where does that put you? 1.70 volts per cell, 100% of capacity used will put you at 1.7. Now, interesting thing about that is, go look that number up. That's the 20% listed for every flooded lead acid battery out there, okay? 1.7 volts. So, and this is a nice way to prove to anybody that says, Oh, you can't use full rated capacity. Well, the hell you can't. Okay, first of all, you can go to any manufacturing website and they'll tell you that, okay? But, one, if you go from 2.1 to 1.7 with this battery, you will have used 1,000 amp hours out of it. Whether it took you six hours or 20 hours, that is capacity you're gonna get out of this IFLA. Now, I'll tell you right now, it takes a whole lot to charge that bad boy up if you, if you run it down this far. If you guys are gonna run these batteries, look, I, I don't see you running them down to their capacity unless you're buying little 500 amp hour cells and, and running an entire electric house. There's a lot of sunshine juice storage here, guys. And it's economical for all of us. That is what makes these things so great. But hopefully you learned a little bit about our voltages. Uh, I'm sure I didn't touch on everything. Uh, something I didn't and you want to know about, make sure you leave a, a comment and I'll answer it or we'll work it into another video for you, okay? Uh, thanks for watching. Happy soloring.